There is a trend right now of using generative AI to automate the mass sending of cold emails to prospects. Here is the big problem with that. At least for now, it's kind of obvious when something's been written by AI, both to computers and human readers. I went onto a free AI copy detector and pasted in an email that I had a row that was trying to sell newspaper advertising services to a local restaurant. It told me that there was a 99.9% .9 chance that that text had been written by a human being. So then I went to ChatGPT and gave it instructions to write a similar email. The free detector Action tool told me there was a 75% chance that email had been written by AI. I went back to ChatGPT, which writes pretty bad emails unless you give it some pretty specific prompts. And I told it to follow some of Lavender's best practices. Keep it under 75 words, take out any cliches and buzzwords. I put in the tool and yet again, it told me there was still a 75% chance that it was written by AI. I thought there must be a way around this. So I took the email that I had written and told ChatGPT to rewrite the email in a way that's more likely to be responded to. I stuck it right back in that tool again and guess what it said? There was still a 70% chance that, that text had been written by AI. You might be thinking, okay, so what if a free online tool can detect that my email was AI generated? Why does that matter? Well, as you may know, two of the biggest players in the generative AI space are Google with Bard and Microsoft with ChatGPT and Bing Chat, which no one uses. You know what else those two companies are really well known for? Gmail and Outlook. And in Microsoft's case, LinkedIn as well. To protect the experience of their users, email clients are constantly updating their spam detection to filter out promotional or malicious emails out of the primary inbox and into the spam folder. Generally speaking, AI copy would suggest something promotional or unimportant. So if you don't think that Google and Microsoft are planning to use if they're not already using similar tools, if not better tools, to screen emails for AI copy and then keep them out of the primary inbox in a similar way to how search engines have deprioritized poorly written AI copy for SEO purposes, you might be mistaken. And that's just email clients. Most enterprise sized companies have extra safeguards to protect their employees from phishing attacks, something that AI is already trying to do convincingly. But that's the dangers of the tech side. Your emails just may go undelivered. But what about the people receiving the emails? Can they tell? The human brain is incredible at detecting patterns. This means after seeing something a few times, we begin to notice themes. And AI generated copy is no different. At least for now, this might change. AI copy is full of clues that it wasn't written by a human. Long drawn out copy, bulky formatting, awkwardly formal tones, jarring artificial politeness, long ass sentence structures, overly assumptive language, overuse of adjectives, vague or irrelevant personalization, and its proneness to fabricating facts and making embarrassing mistakes. Even I, as a non-exec, get a ton of blatantly AI-generated emails. I've learned what they look like. And on a slightly different note, I get a lot of AI-generated comments on my LinkedIn posts as well. It's so obvious when I see them. And unlike sales reps, buyers get a lot of cold emails. So they've got a lot of practice and a lot of learning to spot what an AI email will look like. The same way that they've been able to spot basic automation like, hi name, I spotted your title at company. They already know or will begin to know what AI-generated emails look like. Okay, well, so maybe people and computers can figure out that I sent them an AI generated email. What's the problem with that? Well, if your prospects are able to spot that your email was generated by AI, they're going to either stop paying attention because they've developed a mental spam filter to not pay attention to unimportant emails, saving their time so they can go on with their busy day. Or worse, they could be pissed off because you tried to trick them into thinking that you wrote them a full full email. When in reality, you put zero effort in. Just think about it. If you're not willing to spend, I don't know, three minutes writing someone an email, why the f would they spend more than 10 seconds looking at it? Although it's tempting, scaling quantity like this at the expense of quality quality burns bridges, damages brands, and destroys relationships that are yet to even fall. Now, I don't want to harp on AI too much. We use AI here at Lambda, hence why our website is lambda.ai. But we don't use it to generate entire emails for people because of some of the reasons I mentioned. We believe that the human is the most important element in sales. And when you substitute the human for AI, you're one, devaluing the work of the person, not letting them develop skills, but also lowering the quality of all the work you do. A good cold email is thoughtful. And even tools like ChatGPT, I use them myself to give me inspiration, ideas, and titles for my YouTube videos, summarize long documents like a prospect's annual report. That's gold, that's saving you so much time. However, I believe that when I start to replace my own work, and in sales that includes cold emailing, cold calling, outreach, commenting on LinkedIn posts, with AI, that speaks volumes to the quality of the work that I'm doing, and if anything, puts my job security at risk. If you want to be a good seller who's not being replaced by AI in a few years' time, then being thoughtful and relevant is part of it. So yeah, keep being human, friends.